Now in the real life situations, you will not be dealing with electrons and protons because, because you will not be able to even see them. Okay? The normal life manifestation of a moving charge is a current. Right? Now, so, so, so in, 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 in normal life, I would say, generally, we'll be dealing with a current, right? We will be dealing with a current, correct? We'll be dealing with a current. Now, we know whenever there is a current and, and that will be moving in a conductor, right? A normal life scenario in a household, you'll be, you have all those maybe equipments, electric equipments running, they are all carrying current. So obviously there, there is a movement of, of a charge and that charge is, is an electron, right? It's an electron that is moving. Now an electron, fine, I know the charge on an electron, okay, the, ch the charge on an electron is minus E, that is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb, that I know, fine. Now, but I don't know the VD, alright, I don't know the VD. So, so they are all moving with the drift velocity, that is number one. Number two, number two is that, that. I don't know how many of them are moving, right? I don't know how many of them are moving in a given cross-sectional area, correct? So, so that that number is also unknown to me. So, how do I, how do I try to find out the force on a current carrying conductor? Okay, I, 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 we are convinced about about one thing. <coughs> about one thing that that if say I have a conductor which is carrying a current in this direction and is placed in a magnetic field like like this okay this is the magnetic field okay and this is the current carrying conductor then obviously it has it has electrons moving in this direction right in a direction opposite to the conventional direction of current so so this is v and obviously by whatever we have seen earlier v cross v is a non-vanishing component right it has a non-vanishing component the thing is that this drift this is the drift velocity and this is my b okay now this does not carry only one electron, it must be carrying trillions and trillions of electrons. So first of all you do not know that, right? You do not know that. One thing that you know about this, maybe with the help of an ammeter is, is the current that this conductor is carrying, okay? The current that is being carried by this conductor is known to you, right? We, we get the point so I would like to to get things in terms of B and I which is which, which is what I am able to measure right otherwise I am not able to measure the number of currents I am not um, the, the, the number of electrons I am not able to measure the drift velocity so that formula that formula though correct this formula is not wrong. This formula seems to be failing me. I know the V, fine. I do not know this. Also, I do not know the number because this must be only this must be the force only, only on, on, one on one electron. Right? So, so how do I go about that? How do I go about a current carrying conductor? Fine? So, so let us try to see, let us say I have a current carrying conductor, okay, 
let there be a current carrying conductor a current carrying conductor with with the, with the current i right current i okay which carries a where, where i is the current and let us say a is the cross sectional area cross sectional area right and and let's say L is the length of the conductor. Okay. Fine. So, so we have a, a scenario that looks something like this, that there is a length L of the conductor okay And there is a length L of the conductor here. Okay. This is the length L of the conductor. Okay, and, and let us say it's placed in a magnetic field, all right? It's placed in the magnetic field. Now what happens? Say, say this is the magnetic field. Say the magnetic field is that. A uniform magnetic field right a uniform magnetic field let us say pointing downwards okay pointing downwards points down okay and let us say let us say this part of a conductor obviously this this looks like an open circuit obviously it will not be Otherwise, carrying a current. But let us say this is part of of a circuit that is shown to you. Okay, that means that means it it extends something like that, and and there is a source of of, of creating the current that is a cell, and 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 the circuit is complete. Fine. And and let us say it carries a current I in this direction. Okay, so a current I in this direction carries a current I in this direction a current I in that direction is equivalent to two electrons moving in this direction isn't it these are electrons moving in this direction correct Sir, that is why drift velocity is also opposite to the direction of current. Yeah. Drift velocity is opposite to the direction of the electrons are moving in the direction that is opposite to the current. direction of the conventional current. We we made a mistake somewhere and we, we agreed to keep that mistake with us, right? That is what conventional current direction is. Okay? Now now this for a given I, this is this is moving with a velocity v d which is the drift velocity right this is the drift velocity 
okay so so this is moving with a drift velocity now let us try to calculate the force on one electron right what is the force we have an electron okay i am i'm drawing it separately this is the vd of the electron right and we have the b pointing downwards i make it co initial make it something like that make it something like that this is b now v cross b is counter clockwise comes towards u right so it comes towards us comes towards us this gets multiplied by by this e right now e is negative so the force force flips right the direction of the force goes opposite so so it becomes something like that is that okay this is the direction of the force okay so this is the direction in which the force is experienced by one electron now if the electron tends to kind of move into the paper it will try to drag the conductor along with it right now there are so many electrons how many how many electrons are there in this what is the volume of this what if if the if the a if a is the area of cross section then what is the volume of this that's the volume is the volume is equal to al and what is the number of electrons number of electrons in that that is equal to n al what is n n is the is the volume density okay so n is the number of electrons per unit volume get that it is the number of electrons per unit volume we get it now if it is number of electrons per unit volume and i multiply it by volume i get the total number of electrons right so there are so many number of electrons within this and all of them are experiencing a force f that is so so let let let's see so so force is equal to e rather minus e v cross b this is the force experienced by one electron okay now i have nal electrons so what will be the force experienced by by nal electrons it will simply get multiplied right mm -hmm. so 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 that is force is equal to n a l there is another e with a negative v cross b and this v is nothing but the drift velocity right correct now what Now what? The of I, I is equal to N A B T. So I I I yes I I try to push N E A in. So what happens? It it kind of becomes L N E A B D, right? This is L N E A B D cross B. It will become I, right? 
Now, this has tendency to become I, but then there is a catch. The trouble is that I is not a vector quantity. I is a scalar. Okay? We know that magnitude I is equal to N E A V D and we might be tempted to write this as I with a vector but I current, the electric current, okay, I is is always a, a scalar. It is not a vector. Get the point? It is not a vector. So what do I do? What do I do? I'll have to pull this I out and somehow transfer the characteristic of the vector on L. Okay? But then there is another trouble. I is in this direction. Okay? So if I impart the direction of I to L, I can put that in, but let us try to see what happens. So I, what I do is, what, what, what I what I do is, 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 let me erase this. What I do is, I pull the I out and push the L in with a vector notation over that, saying that the direction of L will be the same as the direction of I. L points in the same direction, points in the same direction as But how can you make the length of it? The length of this is still there is no other way left with us. It is not a length, you see. I have to assign a vector notation to something. And I is an absolute no no with a vector. And the reason is the reason is that it does not add up like a vector. Right? So so if an I coming in this direction kind of meets an I coming in this direction, it does not so happen that it cancels out. That they'll cancel. Rather, they'll move in this direction with 2i. And, and this, as we have seen from KCL, is absolutely independent of, of the angle between these two. So, so this will always remain 2i. So, so it, does not, it does not become something like a vector. Correct? So, so, so technically, it is not possible to impart a vector characteristic to i. So what do we do? We that's why though, though length is obviously length is a scalar, but we impart it a vector character. Area also was a scalar. Mm -hmm. We imparted it a vector. vector characteristic to deal with the e dot ds, right? To deal with the flux. Mm -hmm. Correct? So so it is not such a sacrilege if you do that. Okay? But it will be an absolute crime if you impart a vector characteristic to current. So, so is the really cross the determinant of a matrix? VD cross B is the determinant of a matrix, yes. If it is VD cross B is a determinant of a matrix, if uh, they have those three components or two components, yeah. Yes, but. So, would VD and V both be multiplied by? By? An E. And E, yeah, they'll be multiplied. So, charge is a scalar quantity. So, so I, I'm, I'm okay till now. Here, the trouble comes here when you are trying to, to move this. And, and what happens in the process? You get to know the number of electrons. That was, that was the bother. And V D, they get transformed into I, which is measurable. To, to, to. I'll not say unmeasurable. They are totally measurable quantities. But, but they are microscopic quantities, right? So somehow they have been converted into something that is macroscopic, right? Into a macroscopic quantity I, which is absolutely measurable by, by an ammeter. So when we get NEA inside, will we not have to multiply with B also? B is there, already there now. B is there. But, but there is a trouble. 
we we are not still out of the woods see the trouble is this this led to a force in this direction you will have to see what is the direction of the force when, whether this because because there was a negative sign so do i keep this negative sign do i keep this negative sign yes. no why because the direction of vd and i are opposite so so it has already done that it has already taken into account the if vd is a vector and l is a vector and l points in the direction of see vd was pointing like that right and you say that nea vd nea vd with a, with a, with a, this thing has come out then it is l which takes the direction of it is l which takes the direction of the current and current is in a direction opposite to that of vd so this is the direction of current right and you say that my this, this is no longer current current has become a scalar now so i pull this out i say this is the direction of l now how do you get the direction of l what is the direction of vd and what is the direction of l is it not v minus vd just direction wise i'm not saying length wise but but the direction wise it is opposite so that has been factored in already so so there should not be a negative sign here but let's try to check okay so now i said if it is l cross b then l points in the direction of l points in the direction of the current and b is already pointing downward this is the direction of l this is the direction of of b so what is the direction of l cross b it is in this direction do you see that it is in this direction Yes, this was L, right? So, so L cross B points in this direction, and and which is the direction of the force? You see that? Do we see that? Mm -hmm. So, what happens here is, what happens here is, my I, this 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 negative, you understand? Minus V D, any V D comes out as a scalar. Mm -hmm. This moves in as a vector. Okay, so what happens? You can say that that minus L is minus minus V D is in the direction of L is in the direction of current. So the force now becomes the force now becomes what? This this negative sign is not required. It has to go. So the force becomes. so the force becomes i l cross b earlier we started with f is equal to q v cross b this got manifested as i l cross b and then see these are the two things right this that we learned right now this that we derived but even earlier than this there was a way for you to find out the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field can you tell me what that was that was the fleming's right hand rule left hand rule So we are multiplying a matrix by a scalar. So shouldn't all the elements of the matrix be multiplied by the scalar? We are multiplying a matrix, matrix by a scalar quantity. Yeah. Then all the elements of the matrix get multiplied by the scalar quantity. So, so if we look at this, then any a, any b, b, we can multiply by this. Then B के एलिमेंट तो सारे एलिमेंट्स के साथ तो वो मल्टीप्लाई हुआ नहीं। It gets multiplied with all the elements i j k। हाँ। Okay. That's what the vector. That's how the vector operates. So only if you have if you have two i cap plus three j cap plus four k cap and you multiply it by say three, what happens? Get 
90 yes. So, so what happens? Three gets multiplied to all the all all the uh, all the components, right? But then we have B also. It won't get multiplied there. It does not matter. No, you you multiply it anywhere. See, you already have this that K A cross L B. You you're free to write whatever you want to write it as. So you can write it as A cross K L B. You write it as K L A cross B, or you take A cross B and then multiply it by K L. They are all the same. There's no difference. You pull all of them, all the scalars out, multiply it with one of the vectors. You push all of them onto the other. You distribute it in the manner that you want. You you do the cross product, take it out, and then multiply. It will remain the same. The value remains the same. You understand this? When you are multiplying things, let, let us not get confused. When you are multiplying, this is not a distributive property, right? When you multiply 2 by 3 and by 6, it does not mean that 2 gets multiplied with both of them. It's fair enough to multiply it with any of them. So it is equal to 6 into 6 or 3 into 12. Is that clear? No? This is not 2 into 3 plus 6. This is not that. It, it's not that it gets multiplied to both. Does not happen. It's not this. In a multiplication scenario, it is it is okay if you multiply it with 1 and then that's all. It got absorbed there. It does not transmit further. So you multiply this by this over. Now you need not multiply it with this. This has been factored in here. And we are dealing with, with a product. Correct? We are dealing with a product. You see that? Hmm? Do we see that? Now there are three things. They should all point in the same direction because after all they are the direction of the forces and force does not even know what rule you are applying. Force is a force. It is acting in a given direction. Now all these three should lead to the same result at least in, in terms of direction because Flemings won't tell you the magnitude. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and Flemings has got a slight kind of limitation in the sense that it says that, that, that your V and B should be at 90 degrees. Right? So let us let us kind of take a scenario like that. I'll later tell you how to resolve that with any oblique this thing. So This is the direction of the current. Okay, so so this is the direction in which the electrons move. Right? This is the direction in which the okay. electrons move. Say this, right? This. Let me make it slightly bigger. This is the direction in which the electrons move. 
this is your VD right now let's try to get the direction of the current now of the force on 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 the on this conductor using Q V cross B that we have already seen right so so V cross B V is in in the downward direction so V is V is down V is down and and B is this B is this and, and VD is down and VD cross B points towards U but Q is is an electron right so it points in the direction that is into the paper so this is the direction of the force right now let's come to the second one it is forces this was the expression for force so force is I L cross Mama? B Now the direction of I is upwards, right? So the direction of I is something like that. This is I. Okay. And and this is B. And this is B. So I L cross B. A actually, this is not the duration of I. I should be calling it technically the direction of L. The duration of L is in the duration of I. That's a different matter. But it has to be L. So L cross B, okay, it points in, it, it, it's L cross B, it is hinged, goes clockwise. It goes clockwise and and the force is directed like that. And the force is directed like that. So that gives you the same direction. Correct? Now we come to the Fleming's left hand rule. Fleming's left hand rule had asked us, asked the, asked our The, the, the finger of the left hand okay so so the four finger points in the direction of four finger points in direction of of field magnetic field okay In the direction of field and at the central finger so so four finger field and the central finger central finger points in direction of of C current so you have to you have to bring in the bring in your your uh, the, the three fingers the thumb of the left hand and and the forefinger of the left hand the, the the central finger of the left hand and stretch them in mutually perpendicular direction so so if this is your thumb and this is your finger forefinger And this is your your central finger, right? So, so I'm slightly technically wrong here because when you stretch it like this, your nails will look something like 
this, right? That's better. And these nails are behind that, right? And the rest of the hand, how do we draw that? So, so you have an extension of this there. Okay, and maybe say, say it goes like that, the rest of the hand. Okay. And, and it seems to be kind of curling like that here. Yeah. But I, I'm actually interested in this is your left hand, this is your central finger, this is your forefinger, this is the direction of the force, right? Now, so, there's something wrong about this. I don't know. Don't 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 kind of concentrate there. This is your left hand. You, if you if you stretch the left hand, you do it like that. Okay. Okay. I don't know how to draw the how to draw your arms and and the back of your hand but it's something like that okay so so what happens this if, if I kind of try to align it here then this remains like this right but but this this is pointing in the downward direction it has to point in the direction of the conventional direction of current so you will have to rotate it by 180 degrees so this has to come up right this has to come up if, if that happens then this finger the, this nail will start pointing downward. So, so this nail points downward. This this nail points points downward. Let me let me do that. The nail points downward, and, and this is your this now, right? This and this goes up. So, so let me just draw that. So, so this middle finger goes up, and and you'll be able to see the nails like that. And where does your where, where does this go? This will go go in that direction. This comes up. This remains the same. This goes up. Then this will go, this will point there. So, so this thumb will actually go there. Okay, and that will be the direction of your force. That will be the direction of your force. You see that. Do we see that? So, so this is your thumb. Okay, this is your thumb, and and it points in the direction of force, and hence it becomes the same. All right. So Fleming's left hand rule also tells me that the that the force will be Fleming's left hand rule. Force into the plane of the paper into the plane of the paper correct mm -hmm. did we get the point mm -hmm. so all these three skills that we learned they all point us in the same direction they, they are all pointing in the same direction and they should okay so they are one and the same here we are dealing with the microscopic properties of, of charge and and the drift velocity things with which you will not be able to even see. So we had to convert it in terms of the macroscopic properties of I and length and this. This is the Fleming's left hand rule. This only helps you in, in finding out the direction that to when they are perpendicular. We will go into what you should be doing when it is not perpendicular. Right? Fine?